From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now, in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Strange Island. Lieutenant Jacques Corday stood by the window of the officer's room, scowling out at the sun-baked parade grounds and the blue ocean beyond it. He disliked the British who shared the authority of the sector. He hated Africa. Uh, Africa. Hmm? No, I was talking to myself, Captain Lawrence. I find myself a vastly more amusing conversationalist than any of you British. I dare say the fine art of conversation has become lost to those of us who've been here for many years. How do you stand it? The eat, the insects, the rotten fools, the filthy people. If it were up to me, I would exterminate them all. Even if I agreed with you, which I don't, I hardly believe our combined forces could conquer the Bushmen. They have the power of numbers, of jungle skill, and of great cleverness. All of the jungle people I have come across are rather stupid. I know many who are far more clever than any civilized people I've ever met. So? Not that he's typical, but there's a white jungle man by the name of Tarzan, for example. He... Tarzan? Ah, I've heard of him. He's the jungle lord, Nispa. Yes, many call him by that title. But what I was going to say... If someone were to reveal his superiority to this Tarzan, you would be a man of importance around here, no? Yes, I suppose so. And but... this man would then be in a position to make requests, eh? For a transfer or for other favors, I imagine? I don't know what you have in mind, Lieutenant Corday, but I should like you to know that Tarzan is my friend. Furthermore, we are here to enforce law, not to stir up trouble. But if this Tarzan violated any law, it would be up to us to arrest him, to bring him here for trial, no? Tarzan doesn't break laws. And if he did, it would take a garrison of men to bring him back. One man might be able to accomplish it if he used his head. If he made a study of Tarzan and of the law, and then used both to his own advantage. <laughs> Now, Africa was no longer a dull place for Lieutenant Corday. He spent his days talking to people who knew Tarzan, learning his strength and his human weaknesses. And his nights were spent poring over the law books that had to do with the African colonies. Every man makes mistakes, and when Tarzan made one, Lieutenant Corday intended to take advantage of it. It required months of study and of patient waiting, but at last a story drifted back to civilization concerning the Lord of the Jungle... And it was sufficient to take Lieutenant Corday and a small complement of men into the jungle and to the seacoast cabin of Tarzan. I'm rather curious, Lieutenant Corday. Why did your men turn around and leave you here alone? Because I ordered them to return to camp, Tarzan. But first I secured a boat that will enable me to get back. Such a journey in a small boat is dangerous. I have spent my life at sea, but uh, I did not come here to discuss the abilities of Lieutenant Jacques Corday. I came to speak of those of the Lord of the Jungle. My abilities? Your prowess with a bow and arrow, to be precise. The story concerning your recent killing of a white rhinoceros has impressed many of us at the international camp. You are aware it is against the law to kill a white rhinoceros? Yes, I know they passed such a law, and it was a, a good thing, for the white rhinoceros is almost extinct, and conservation measures are important, but I shot this rhino in order to save a life. No, the law does not stipulate any exceptions. <laughs> but surely those those who passed the law did not intend I to I was stop. told you would try to talk your way out of this, Tarzan, but there is no arguing with the law. I have come here to arrest you. To arrest me for saving someone's life? Go, go back to your camp before I lose my temper. I will go back, and you will go with me. You should have kept your men here. Perhaps a company might have been able to force me to go back, if they could have caught me. <laughs> Frankly, I brought them for only one reason. What was it? So they could testify as to my safe arrival here and my meeting with you. Oh, of what importance is that? Because now the only factor to be solved is my safe return. I am well aware I would stand no chance either at sea or in the jungle alone. So unless you go with me, you will be responsible for my death. I have never knowingly caused any man's death. I have left a letter at the post to be opened if I fail to return. 
And in it, I hold you responsible for my safety. It would be like attacking me or feeding me to one of your jungle animals to refuse to accompany me. I am to assist you in returning to the camp so that you can bring me up on this ridiculous charge? But if I do not return, you will be held for my murder. I have never been so tempted to commit one. <laughs> I don't think you'll give way to that temptation. We should have a most pleasant voyage. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll return to our story of the strange island. There is a storm brewing, Tarzan. We will have to trim ourselves. Well, the wind hasn't started to rise yet. But it will soon. If there were a place to put in here, I would order it, but the island is gone. The island? An oceanic island used to lie quite near here until a few years ago, but it's submerged. They sometimes do that, you know. Would have been handy in case of trouble. Well, it's only a few miles to the mainland. I, I could swim that far if anything happened to the boat. <laughs> I couldn't. Do you think you could pull me that far? Pull you? If I do not return, you will be held for my murder. The storm is coming up. It's going to be a bad one. Quite so. Perhaps we should lash ourselves to the deck. No, no, I, I must be free. You will never be free if you swim ashore and leave me here to drown. Remember, if I do not return, you will be held for my murder. The storm had struck with tropical suddenness, and now its fury increased as though all of Africa were aboard. The waves lashed high, the boat lurched violently, and the men were swept from its deck. Tarzan's powerful arms carried him back to the frail craft, but Lieutenant Corday was nowhere in sight. He'd gone down. He would not return to the camp, and if Tarzan lived, he'd be charged with murder. He had to find it. But as Tarzan attempted to scurry over the wreckage, the mast shivered and cracked. As it toppled, it struck Tarzan upon the head, and he started sinking into the ocean depths completely unconscious. the boat go down? Yes. Yes, it was splintered against the rocks. Well, Lieutenant Corday, the man who was with me, did he die? I, I don't know. I, I saw no one else but you, and even if I had seen another, I couldn't have dragged anyone else ashore. You dragged me ashore? But you're only a slender girl. No. I was always very strong. Father used to say I should have been a boy. In the gym class at the English school in Lagos, I was always head of the class. Oh, it isn't possible that the current carried me to Lagos. Oh, oh, no. We're hundreds of miles from there. We're quite near where the storm struck your boat. The storm? It's, it's, it's completely over. Of course. You've been unconscious for hours. But I, I do think it's time you opened your eyes completely. It's really quite sunny now. Oh. An island. I'm I'm on an island, a beautiful one. I've never seen such lush vegetation, such glorious flowers and gaily plumed birds. It is a beautiful spot. I love it here. But this must be the island Lieutenant Corday said was submerged. Oh, did he? Oh, I, I'm happy it isn't. For if it were, I, I shouldn't have been able to save you, Tarzan. <laughs> how, how do you happen to know my name? Oh, I... I suppose you might as well know. I, I've had a crush on you since I was 12. I used to read stories about you. And once I, I clipped a picture out of the Lagos paper and kept it on my bureau. Once when you were in Lagos concerning some native who was accused of something or other, I waited by the courthouse all day just to get a glimpse of you. Well, that's very flattering. I, I think I have something of a crush on you for saving my life. Besides that, you're... A very pretty girl. Oh, thank you. I've waited years just to hear you say something like that to me. <laughs> years? You can't be very old now. Oh, I'm 17. It's my birthday today. Your birthday? Well, we'd, we'd best get you home. Your parents and your friends must surely have arranged some sort of a party and they'll be worried about you. Which, which way is the village? Village? 
Oh, there's no village on the island. I'm the only one who lives here. A 17-year-old girl living alone on a tropical island? How long have you been here? I, I, I'm i not sure. Sometimes it seems that I've been here forever. Father used to bring me here sometimes when we went sailing. He used to love it, too. There's something very strange about this. Will, will you answer a few questions for me? Of course, Tarzan. First, I'd, I'd like to know your name. It's Pamela. Pamela Johns. And your father's name? Godfrey Johns. But I really don't see what... Does your father know you're here on the island all alone, or, or does he think you're off visiting friends somewhere on the mainland? Oh, yes, that's it. He, he thinks I'm visiting friends. Well, I, I think you should return home. Where's your boat? Boat? Yes, the one you came over to the island on. Where is it? Oh. Oh, well, it, it was wrecked in the storm. It, it washed away. Oh. Well, I guess I'll have to swim ashore and get help so that I can take you home. Tarzan. Yes? Please don't leave me now. All my life, I, I dreamed of you. I know we can't ever really mean anything to each other, but spend this day with me. Give me this day as a birthday present. One no one can ever take away from me. Leave tonight for the mainland, if you must. And so the day was spent swimming in the island's blue lagoon, running over its lush green carpet of soft moss and fern, frolicking like children suddenly released from school. But as the night shadows began to creep over the island palms, Tarzan knew that he must return to his world, even as this charming girl must return to hers. They stood facing each other on the strip of beach, and Pamela's slender hand clutched at Tarzan's. Must you really go back? Yes, Pamela, I must swim to the mainland so I can find a boat to take you home. And I must let your father oh, know no. that you're... No, you, you mustn't get in touch with him. He'd... And there are matters of my own to be straightened out. I may be in serious trouble concerning the man who drowned when you saved me. Oh, but you might drown. It's a long way to the mainland. Oh, the sea is calm now, and I can swim it without difficulty. Goodbye, Pamela. And, and thank you for your birthday. Wait. Yes? That amulet you wear about your neck, would you give it to me as a remembrance of this day? It will be all that I'll ever have to keep the day warm in my memory. Of course you may have it, but we'll, we'll see each other often. I'll, I'll return with the boat, and even after you're living back in Lagos, no, I'll come to... No, Tarzan. We'll never see each other again. Thank you for the amulet. Thank you. Goodbye. Tarzan waded into the water and struck out for the main. And as he passed out of sight, another tropical storm began, and this one enveloped the island. Great tidal waves smashed against the rocks. Bolts of lightning hurtled downward. A fragile girl stood on the beach, her eyes still gazing out to sea. But not by a movement of her body or a flick of her eyelids did she acknowledge the storm. And only a tender sigh escaped her as the island submerged, leaving only strands of seaweed in place of the tropical paradise. And completely untouched by the storm were the waters where Tarzan swam. Some four hours later, he reached the dock of a small native settlement and climbed out of the water. It is uh, Tarzan. I knew he'd Captain turn up. Lawrence. Oh, what are you doing here? I've had boats I'm looking for you ever since yesterday. I'd almost given up hope. Well, let's get one of those boats. I, I have to go back to the island. You have to... What island? There's an island just a few miles out here. Well, there isn't an island within 200 miles yes, of here. But there is. I've been there all day. I know there was one up until a few years but ago. There still is. It's it's southwest of here, and I have to go back. There's a young girl all alone on the island, and I have to go there back. There must to... have been that mast that struck your head. You're probably. What? what do you know about a mast striking my head? Lieutenant Corday told us about it. He said you were trying to push him under when the mast toppled. I hate to do this, Tarzan, but my orders are to bring you back so that you can face a charge of attempted murder. <laughs> In 
in just a moment, the strange and exciting conclusion of Strange Island. There will be no more outbursts from you, Tarzan. You're not in your jungle, but in a court of justice. I apologize, Your Honor. But when people accuse me of lying... Frankly, Tarzan, you try the patience of this court. And let us review the case. Lieutenant Corday came into the jungle to arrest you in a charge of violating the law that forbids the killing of a white rhinoceros. Which I have already explained. It was either the life of the rhino or that of a young native who had been disarmed. That case against you has been dropped. But that of attempted murder is still pending against you. It is the duty of this court to determine whether the charge is true or not. But it is true. I have told the court how this savage attempt to hold me underwater until I drown in order to escape punishment for violating the game law. Is the word of an officer and a gentleman to be disregarded? Not at all, Lieutenant Corday. But we are obliged to hear all the testimony. Now then, Tarzan, if you were not hiding from the law, where were you following the accident into the boat? You, you would not believe my answer, and I refuse to be called a liar again. Captain Lawrence could tell you that never in my life have I Unfortunately, ever... Unfortunately, Captain Lawrence has seen fit to disappear. It seems highly likely Captain Lawrence disappeared because he does not choose to serve as a character witness for Tarsa. <laughs> Your Honor, Your Honor, since I have neither counsel nor witness, will you permit me the right to question the man who claims I tried to kill him? Yes, you may cross-examine him. Take the witness stand, Lieutenant Gordy. All right, Tarzan. Ask me what questions you will. Lieutenant Corday, you've told the court that you swim poorly. That you were so busy struggling to keep afloat that you could not defend yourself from me. Is that correct? That is very true. Then how did you manage to swim ashore after my savage attack upon you? Well, I did not swim ashore. After you were rendered unconscious by the falling mast, I floated there on a piece of wood that had been torn from the wreckage by the storm. And your makeshift raft reached the shore near Malakanda only a few hours after the storm struck. Is that also correct? May we, it is correct. In what direction was the storm traveling? I do not know exactly. It seems to, to strike all at once. And what direction does the normal current flow at the spot where the boat capsized? You are asking many technical questions concerning the sea. As an army officer, I could not possibly be expected to know such thing. Perhaps I can convince the court that only a very strong swimmer could have reached the shore at all, that a raft would have been carried in the opposite direction, and that you have knowingly committed perjury concerning these matters since your training has been that of a naval officer. Why, you are talking a great deal of nonsense. I should like I to am... call Captain Lawrence as my next witness. But Captain Lawrence I is not... I am here, Your Honor. I ran back in near Kota over an hour ago. I've been sitting at the back of the courtroom. Well, take the stand. I'm happy to see you, Captain Lawrence. Tarzan. Will you will you tell the court what you have learned during the past few days? With pleasure. Your Honor, gentlemen, I shall be as brief as possible. I have traveled a great distance to learn of the past of Tarzan's accuser. I found that because of the shortage in army personnel, Lieutenant Corday was commissioned without any extensive investigation. Had his past been checked closely, it would have been discovered that he left the Navy under a cloud, occasioned by an incident that took place at camp. No, man, no, Captain Lawrence, you must not take In that another to... moment, I shall hold you in contempt, Lieutenant Corday. Uh, oh, the holder of numerous medals for swimming and small craft handling, Lieutenant Corday went boating with a fellow officer, one who was a competitor for a promotion. The other man did not return. There was no evidence of foul play. But Lieutenant Corday saw fit to resign his commission and volunteer for African service in the army. He hoped to gain a transfer after the incident had been forgotten. Tarzan was to be the instrument through which that transfer was to be effected. <laughs> ask to see you in your chambers because I have a favor to ask. Now that I've been cleared, I'd like to leave near Koto as soon as possible. Well, perhaps we'll have enough evidence against Corday without your testimony, Tarzan. I don't know what this important mission of yours is, but I wish you luck. Thank you. I had a hunch all along that Corday was lying. 
I know those waters near where you were wrecked. And the currents there are... Are you uh, familiar with the island near there? No, I knew the island that was there. Up until the time it submerged, it was a wonderful spot for fishing. Used to go there with an old friend, Godfrey Johns. Poor chap. Poor chap? No, I'd, I'd rather not talk about him. Uh, t- tell me one thing, if you will. Does he still live in Lagos? Yes, if you can call it living. <laughs> you, you said you'd rather not talk about him, but... Do tell me what you mean by phrases like poor chap and and if you can call it living. Well, Godfrey Johns has become a complete recluse. Won't see anyone or go anywhere. Keeps himself buried on an estate near Lagos. He's been that way ever since the death of his daughter, Pamela. Tarzan spent all one day sailing along the coast, circling the district near where Corday and he had been shipwrecked. The search was in vain. Tarzan's strange island was gone, but perhaps some clue as to the mysterious happenings and the identity of the girl might be uncovered at Lagos. A few days later, Tarzan reached the city and made his way to the estate of Godfrey Johns. Tarzan was immediately ushered into a great drawing room, and as he entered the room, his eyes fastened on a beautiful portrait that hung over the fireplace. It was a picture of Pamela. He stood there fascinated and yet confused. Good afternoon, Tarzan. That that picture. That picture, Mr. Johns. It's my only child, Pamela. She died some time ago. Under... Under what conditions? Well, you see, there used to be an island along the coast, off of Malikanda. And I used to take Pamela there as a child. It's wonderful for picnics and fishing. On her 14th birthday, I gave her a small boat. She wasn't supposed to, but she took it out alone. Sailed for the island. Yes? Well, she must have misjudged the rocks by the small cove. We found the wreckage of her boat there. And Pamela? You never found her? Yes, we found her. On the beach, she had always loved. There couldn't have been any mistake about her identity? Oh, her face was unmarked. Look at her picture there. Could you mistake such a face? No, you couldn't. She's lovely. I've never spoken about her to anyone else, Tarzan. Why did you decide to talk with me? Because you were always her idol. She used to read stories about you. She clipped a a picture of you out of the Lagos paper at one time, kept it on her bureau. Once she waited outside a courthouse in the city just to catch a glimpse of you. I thought I would like to talk to you, Tarzan. Thank you. When did this this accident happen? Three years ago. She'd have been 17 last Wednesday. The day I spent on the island. A sort of a poetic thing. The island, it gave us so much pleasure and so much sorrow. Disappeared a few days after her death. Was she buried there? No. No, I wanted her near me. You must have passed her grave on the way in. It's just by the entrance to the estate. I see. I haven't been able to bring myself to go there during the past week. Her birthday always affects me that way. Perhaps, perhaps you'd go there with me. hmm? I'd like to put some flowers on her grave. Of course. Yes, Tarzan, that's where my little Pamela is buried. Perhaps another man might have built an imposing monument, but I felt... There, on, would... on the ground, there. Oh, that's an my... amulet. I wonder how that could have gotten here. The gardener never touches the grave. I take care of it myself. Tarzan, has your name engraved on it? Yes, I, I, I passed this way on my way to the house. I must have dropped it. Up. Ah. Yes, I, I... I dropped it on the way. Ah, yes. Mr. Johns, if, if you don't mind, let's... Let's just leave it here. My small tribute to your daughter, to the lovely Pamela, who would have been 17 last week. We 
hope you enjoyed the story of Strange Island, and we invite you to remain with us for another few moments so that we may tell you about our next story of Tarzan. An army unused to the jungle, its men dropping like flies beneath the equatorial sun, a thundering herd of stampeding animals killing all in their path, an angry mob of bloodthirsty natives with vengeance in their hearts, and a garrison of men marooned in a jungle stronghold and doomed to die there. These are the elements of our next story, a message to Fort Shabir. Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Commodore production.